Did you know pterodactyls have been spotted and reported in the United States and worldwide thousands of times and for many years? Some as recently as 2021. And Texas has a whopping majority of them. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's the climate. Maybe it's the terrain. Probably a little bit of both. Whatever the reason, it's got Texas folk keeping an eye towards the sky and the ground in some cases. We're going to explore what they are, some very credible sightings, and possible explanations. Hang on tight. It's going to be one wild ass ride. Well, first, I guess we should establish what we know. Paleontologists will tell you that the pterodactyls and pterodons are part of a larger group called the pterosaurs. These critters lived at the same time as the dinosaurs and are often labeled as dinosaurs by amateurs, but they're considered to be true reptiles and not part of the dinosaur group. Although they're commonly considered to be a cousin of the dinosaur. The word pterosaur is derived from the Greek words pteron and soros, meaning winged lizard. It's all Greek to me. The pterosaur stood on two rather skinny legs and had wings composed of a leathery membrane that stretched from the animal's very long fourth finger to its body. They also had a large bony crest on their head. It's a bonehead! Despite their appearance, they were not related to birds. They were extremely successful flyers that dined on fish, land animals, fruits, and insects. They ranged in size from as small as a 10-inch wingspan all the way up to a 36-foot wingspan. While standing, the largest ones could reach the height of a modern giraffe. Damn! They started out with short legs and long tails with a diamond or spade-like appendage on the end. Eventually, evolving into shorter tails with longer legs. They are a flying reptile of the Mesozoic era that supposedly have been extinct for over 60 million years. However, multiple recent sightings suggest that these large flying reptiles are still alive to this day. Harlingen, Texas, January 1976. Teens Jackie Davis and Tracy Lawson were walking home from school one afternoon when they reported seeing a bird on the ground that stood five feet tall. It was dark in color with a bald head and a face like a gorilla's with a sharp six inch long beak. Like Danny DeVito? Shocked at what they were seeing, they slowly backed away, still facing it. Then, the creature flapped its giant wings and glided off. At first, their parents thought that they were just making shit up. However, the teens insisted, after... <laughs> <laughs> considerable coaxing, their parents decided to investigate the area of the sighting to put their children at ease. Surprisingly, they discovered tracks that had three toes and were eight inches across. San Antonio, Texas, February 1976. Three elementary school teachers were driving to school one morning in three separate cars. 
while driving on a lonely two-lane road leading to school, they each saw what they described as a large pterodactyl swooping low over their cars as they drove. They said it dove down close to their car, then soared back up into the sky. They said its wingspan was between 15 and 20 feet. One of the teachers commented that it glided through the air on huge bony wings like a bat. Fresno, Texas, September 1982. An ambulance driver named James Thompson was stopped at a red light while driving on Highway 100 by Fresno. While waiting to continue, he saw a black or grayish large bird-like object gliding low to the ground with a skin-like covering instead of feathers. It had a five to six foot wingspan a hump on the back of its head, and almost no neck at all. After consulting some books to identify the creature, he determined that it looked very similar to a pterosaur. San Antonio, Texas, 1986. One evening, a man was outside his apartment building talking to his brother. They knew what the local birds and bats looked like and were familiar with exotic animals as well from regular zoo attendants and their general interest. I can see that. I once had an 11 foot boa constrictor. Neither his brother or himself was prone to being scared by anything at night. But this night, was different. They noticed something flying around across the road from them. It wasn't far from their position. The creature was flying just above the phone lines. They reported that it would go one direction, turn, and swoop back. It also made low grunting noises. The shape was completely wrong for any large bird of the area, and it was much too large to be any bat they had ever seen. The beast's wingspan was huge. It was at least 10 feet across. It was as though a giant vampire bat was there flying around them. They quickly took cover to the safety of their apartment and grabbed a cross and some garlic. Houston, Texas, 1988. A little girl saw an extremely large bird-like creature fly over the playground of her school during recess and described it to her teacher. Her teacher jokingly said that it sounded like a pterodactyl. She probably shouldn't have said that. Several strange flying creatures were chronicled in Southeast Texas in the 1980s. Apparently, the little girl knew nothing about any other sightings in that area at the time. Only when she was older did she look for reports of other sightings like hers. She found out there were numerous others with matching descriptions. Northeast Texas, 1995. According to the eyewitness, Aaron Tullock, this thing flew over my head about eight feet off the ground and stopped and hovered in midair by flapping its featherless, bat-like wings, which were about four feet in span, maybe five. It had a tail about three feet long with a flange on the end. It had no head crest and no feathers at all. 
although there was kind of a longish bump on the back of its head. Brownsville, Texas, 1995. A woman's dog was acting very strangely. The eyewitness was afraid that her dog was sick because it wasn't eaten. She reported that she went outside around late morning to feed her dog. She found the dog cowering around the side of her house, as low as she could get behind a banana tree. She heard a weird noise that made her turn her head. In the open backyard next door was what looked like a, a tall man looking away from her. The man turned and she realized that this man didn't have a face like a man at all. It, it didn't even look human. It appeared to be nine to ten feet tall. Holy shit! She froze in fear, trying to figure out what she was staring at. She watched the black leathery and almost shimmery like they were wet, bat-like wings unfurl from around the man. She was so terrified, she barely breathed. It stared right at her with its large black eyes and walk closer to her. Get the hell out of there. It had been about 40 feet away, maybe. Then it turned its head away. She recognized the shape of its head. It, it looked just like a pterodactyl. She thought that was crazy and couldn't be. It turned its head back to her and opened its long, beak-like mouth. The thing appeared to just lift off the ground, gliding away. She ran into her house and slammed the sliding glass door behind. She quickly looked out the window and caught the shadow of its profile soaring away. Austin, Texas, 2010. John was traveling home from work, going northbound, when something in the air caught his eye. At first glance, it didn't register. He just figured it was a large bird, but he knew he recognized it. It took him a moment or two to realize this bird was supposed to be extinct. It had a pointy head, long, large webbed wings and a long tail with a triangle tip. He said, I saw it as clear as day, no doubt. Between Houston and Nederland, Texas, April 2017. Helen was driving from Houston to Nederland and was shocked at what she witnessed. She saw something very strange one afternoon. It was something that resembled a bird, but she knew it wasn't a bird. It was very large and a dark color. She stated that it had a long tail. She couldn't believe what she saw. It was the size of a, a large interstate sign, like those big green ones. It was solid black, and she saw its wings flapping. She reported that she didn't think it had feathers, but at least she didn't see any. It had a large crest on its head. Being it was midday, she said that someone else had to have seen it. It was in broad daylight, and it flew off over the trees. She said that she felt crazy telling her friends about what she saw. 
one of her friends insisted that she report it. Video it, put it on YouTube, and in like two days, you'll have like a million views. Irving, Texas, October 10, 2017. Jessica was on her way to school one morning when she saw a very large creature flying above a nearby woodsy area. It had wings, head, and a tail similar to a pterodactyl, and it was gliding around above the trees. It was a cloudy morning, and the creature was silhouetted by the clouds. She said that its tail was kind of a medium length and stretched a bit beyond the legs. At first, scientists tried to explain away the sightings as nothing more than frigate birds. These large oceanic birds do share some qualities with pterosaurs. Large wingspan, long tail feathers, but they're commonly seen in coastal states bordering the ocean. A large majority of the pterosaur sightings occur inland, Montana, Idaho, Utah, Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Arkansas have the majority. Sure, some sightings of pterosaurs in coastal states can be chalked up to misidentification, but not all of them. Also, some scientists say that pterosaur sightings are nothing but large cranes or storks, but that explanation doesn't fly. For one, cranes and storks have feathers, lots of them, and They're obvious when their wings are spread. In every sighting of a pterosaur, it has been clear there were no visible feathers, only a membrane connecting the wing to the body. Another problem with this hypothesis is cranes and storks rarely come out at night. Several pterosaur sightings occurred in the dead of night or at least well after dark. To be fair, some have occurred during the day. And finally, the size. A common crane's wingspan maxes out at seven feet. A sandhill crane is around six feet. A wood stork has just under a six foot wingspan. The majority of pterosaur sightings put their wingspan between 10 and 30 feet. On top of all that, and I do mean literally, the crest on the top of the pterosaur's head was described as a bony protrusion. Some cranes and storks have a crest, but they consist of feathers, and it's pretty easy to tell the difference between a clump of feathers and a bone sticking out of the head, even at a distance. A bone and some feathers, hmm, sounds kinky. Researchers now favor the idea of there being one or more undiscovered species of giant bats. Since bats can have very odd shaped heads, It could be that some unclassified bats happen to look like pterosaurs. And bats are known to come out at night. It's possible. Other explanations have leaned more towards dragons, since the creatures in pterosaur sightings sometimes look like a cross between a dragon and a pterosaur. I can see where they could be confused. However, In order for that explanation to be correct, dragons would have to exist. A supposition yet to be proved. Yet. It could be that the legends and sightings of dragons are actually pterosaurs, which seems more likely than the dragons being sighted. 
delving into the supernatural a little bit now. One paranormal theory speculates that pterosaurs are actually from other dimensions or from the past and unintentionally slip past gates in time or space, which transport them where they can be seen by bewildered contemporary humans. A time-traveling pterosaur. The lack of evidence is accounted for as the pterosaur usually finds its way back without leaving a trace of its brief modern existence behind. This theory is based on speculation surrounding the Bermuda Triangle and other enigmatic areas on Earth known for the disappearance of humans, UFO activity, and strange creatures. In fact, the space-time gateway theory has been applied to Bigfoot and lake monsters as well. Of course, that's my favorite explanation. According to cryptozoologist Jonathan David Whitcomb, the total number of clear sightings of modern pterosaurs worldwide during the 20th century appears to be at least in the hundreds of thousands, according to the work of researchers up until about the year 2016. However, as of mid-2021, it appears that those clear sightings may number at least one million in the United States alone. What? And encounters with pterosaurs have continued into the 21st century with no signs of letting up. There's even an old photo of an apparent pterodon taken in the 19th century that was declared genuine on January 14, 2017 by the physicist Clifford Pava and by the cryptozoology author Jonathan Whitcomb. That's some incredibly wild shit there. So, are pterosaurs really extinct? Or are they among the many other creatures thought to be extinct, but are actually alive and well today? In fact, there are many animals that have been discovered in just the past 100 years that were thought to be extinct for millions of years. Did you know there are reports of smaller versions of the Triceratops and Brachiosaurus living within some of the vast jungles of the world? I didn't, but that's pretty fucking cool. The best thing we can do is to be free thinkers. Most scientists and teachers hold so strongly to their archaic theories that they are unwilling to look at the evidence with an unbiased open mind. And some, in fact, have suppressed information that goes against their views. You don't say. To come to the right conclusions about anything that is propagated as fact, one should be given all the evidence and then be allowed to freely make their own conclusions about what they believe. 